Yo, yo, what's going on? Welcome back to J World Trap TV. Hey guys, I'm sorry. I just, I just, I just fell asleep on that episode of the shy because if guys, come on, y'all, come on, y'all, don't, don't, come on, don't cap. Y'all know, y'all know that was, uh, that was a sleeper. That was, that was not that entertaining. But we're gonna recap it anyway. We are recapping the shy season six, episode four. This episode is called Re Up. Let's jump right in, let's go. So we start the episode off and Duda, he's having a sour session with this girl named Bianca. And I'm pretty sure this girl just ashed on Duda's nuts. I'm serious, look. So it turns out it's 420 and Bianca's telling Duda that he's gonna make a lot of money and Duda says he doesn't like this holiday and he even says he don't like smoking weed cause it clouds his head, but he hit the blunt anyway. He's interrupted in his little sex session when his wife Rosalind shows up and she says she wanna talk. So we go to Emmett's house and Emmett, he's over here making some weed infused chicken, but he's also still looking for that gun, tearing up the house, looking for that gun. Shot is there and he tells him to relax and he passes him the blunt and him, Shot and Victor start talking about their different challenges and stresses that they're having in their life. Trigg suggests they all need therapists and says that he wants to start a men's therapy group. He asks them if they can come to the rock center so they can start a session. We switch back to Rosalind and Duda and Rosalind tells us that Quentin was a FBI informant. No way. I didn't see that coming. That didn't seem like his character, but okay. She says the cops don't have any information on him, but if they find out that he murdered Quentin, that would be a big issue for them. Rosalind says she's gonna keep the cops at bay for now, but that Duda gotta stop shooting niggas for chewing goddamn bubble gum. Shit, I know that's right. So now we switch to a scene and we pretty much see a bunch of people, you know, talking to Tiff, uh, ordering weed products from her. So we start off with Jada and Darnell. Then we go over to Fatima. She's over there getting high off of that chicken. Then we got Bakari hitting the bubbler with Nuck and Nuck hits up Tiffany for more bud. But we find out on Tiffany's end that Rob is telling Tiffany to keep giving Nuck doodles weed. So, so this nigga Nuck thinking of, he over here smoking the good pack, but he over here smoking last week's sack. Tiffany asks Rob how long it's gonna take for them to get out of from under Duda, and Rob says soon. So we go to Duda at the chop shop, and it turns out Shad is here working at the chop shop, and he comes from under a car, and Duda hands him a big stack of cash. Duda says it's more where that came from, but Shad says, yo, I know where this came from, and this is a one-time thing, so, so this shit is weird to me. Duda, you needed a mechanic that bad? What, what, what was this nigga doing in here? Was he just working on the car? You got, you got like 10, 10 mechanics up in this bitch. What, why you need this nigga? He just want everybody in his pocket. So Nuck, he shows Duda a cache of guns. And I guess there was a buyer coming to pick these up, but he never showed up. And Nuck thinks maybe he got picked up by the FBI. Duda gets pissed off. He's paranoid. He doesn't want these guns or any cash around him. He tells Nuck to get this stuff out of the chop shop. Nuck then goes to Bakari and asks him if he knows somewhere where they can hide the money and the guns. So we go to the so we go to the rock center and Dre comes in. She sees this woman named Monica, and I guess they used to date. Dre coming there making it really awkward and shit. And Monica's like, oh, do I need to talk to Tracy? Maybe this is gonna this isn't gonna work out. And Dre's like, nah, we good, we good, it's okay. And we end the scene. We go to Gemma and Marcus talking, and he has some concerns about, you know, Gemma going through all this money for her college fund. And he's saying that she has until graduation to make this little thing work, or otherwise he's pulling the plug and she's going to college. She gets mad and she brings up his girlfriend and is like, well, okay, you over here supporting her, but you can't support me. And he's like, yo, I ain't supporting nobody, but yeah, you gotta get this going or you're going to school. We go to Fatima at the drag queen club and Long story short, they was talking for a long ass time. They was talking about a lot of nothing for a long ass time. But basically, Fatima, she wants to start a family and stuff. And you know, she just moved in with Trig, but she doesn't want to get in the way of his career and slow him down. And they're like, girl, you know, chase your dreams and do your dreams. You know, you should, you know, end up with that man with shiny armor that's taking care of you. And she's like, well, we take care of each other, but I don't want to get in the way. So that's pretty much what happens. She don't really make a decision. She wants to have kids, wants to have a family, but she don't want to get in Trig's way. And I don't even think she's talked to Trick about this shit, but okay. So we go back to the Rock Center and Dre's, she's in her office and Monica, cause she comes in and she asks Dre if they want to catch up with coffee. And I'm like, girl, you just started working here. You know, how about you get some goddamn work done before you start asking people for coffee and shit. And Dre's like, nah, that's not a good idea because I don't want to explain to my wife while I'm hanging out with my ex fiance. So she, this is the ex fiance. And it, and it also turns out that that homegirl broke up with Jada when they were engaged. So they was engaged to get married, but then she left Dre when they were engaged. So she pretty much broke her heart. Dre shows Monica her family, you know, talking about her grandkids and stuff. And Monica zooms in on Nina and she's like, oh, so this, this is not your type girl. Like this, this is not who you used to date. And, and Dre's like, oh, I stopped dating my type because my type kept breaking my heart. So homegirl, homegirl really did Dre dirty, it sounds like. Monica asks Dre again if they gonna get some coffee and Dre look at her like she crazy. So I don't think they went and got that coffee. They either did the scene, but it don't look like they went and got that coffee. 
we go to Keisha and she's at the house washing dishes and stuff. And then she hear the kids break something. So she go to see what they doing. And then Emmett walk in and Emmett, he just got home and she's like, hey, you're gonna have to wash these kids and you got to clean up this mess. And he like, what, I just got home. And she like, look, we need a nanny. We need a maid, all this shit. And Emmett's like, bro, I'm not the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Like, what the, what the hell are you talking about? So she's like having like this weird issue because what, what I don't understand is she know that they got a loan from Duda for this house and now she's talking about getting a maid and getting and getting getting a nanny what the hell Keisha you need, to, you need to sit your ass down for a second girl I don't know many teachers that got maids and nannies bro so we go to a studio and we got Maisha she's in here recording and we got Gemma on the other side she's watching she got the engineer mixing stuff up Gemma asks the engineer how Maisha sound and this nigga says that she sounds like <laughs> They end up running out of studio time and Gemma comes out. She goes up to my agent's like, hey man, next time you gotta come correct, girl. Like you got you gotta come with some bars, cause that shit was trash. Maisha's like, yo, I'm trying to find my voice and this and that. And that if this doesn't work, that she's just gonna go to college instead. And Gemma, you know, she just talked to her dad and she's like, no, 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 no. Th this has to work, bro. You 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 gotta make this work. Cause I, I I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't risk all this on you just for you to pack up your bags and say, I'm just going to college. So then Maisha's like, well, I'm the one rapping. I'm the one doing all the rapping. And Gemma tells her that they, they would not be this far without Gemma. You know, Gemma got them in the studio paying a rack for an hour. She managed to show. And Maisha doesn't think it's much, but, but, you, but we know, we know it's a lot. We know that Gemma is putting up her education to help this girl. So Gemma was like, yo, I need another good song from you. And Maisha's like, look, if you don't, if you don't think that I'm good at this, like if you don't think it's worth it for me, then let me know right now. And Jim is like, I don't feel that way. I think you have what it takes. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw this out there, guys. Maisha over here talking to Gemma like she one of Lizzo's dancers, bro. For real. She over here, you know, she just disrespecting the game, bro. She don't understand what Gemma is bringing to the table. And I'm like I said last episode, this is gonna be a problem. They have a communication issue because Maisha doesn't understand how much of Gemma Gemma is putting into her career. You know what I'm saying? She made a, she made, she made a thousand dollars on that show, right? And gave and gave Gemma two hundred dollars, but Gemma just went and spent the whole band on her goddamn uh, on her recording time. So this girl don't, she doesn't understand the industry. She doesn't understand how this shit is working. She just walking in like an idiot recording, and she don't know what it took to get there. And that's a problem. And that's why, that's why I'm gonna tell you, Gemma, just back away, back away, go get somebody who really wants this shit, bro. Because this girl, she don't want it. So we go to Papa and Kenya, and I can't tell if they're on a date, but they're definitely bowling together. Papa's being a good coach, and he helps her with her game. She rolls the ball, and she gets a strike. Next thing you know, her song comes on that she likes, and Papa's like, yeah, I put your song on, girl. So then they start dancing a little bit, and she kisses Papa. So they definitely on a date now. We go to Trigg's office, and Rosalind comes in to visit him. He drops the news that Q was an informant, and, and you know, Trigg is like, well, what they got to do with me? And then she tells him, well, guess what, bro? We know you're an accomplice to the murder, so you got to keep your mouth shut. And he's like, yo, I don't want to lie. But she's like, bro, the, the alternative is to go to jail, so your ass better lie. So don't say shit. Lie, lie your ass off. So we go to we go to Cairo, and he's over here teaching Tiff and Rob how to grow. And they up in this house, they got they got the whole hazmat suits on, and they going through it. He's showing the whole thing. I'm not going to try to summarize what this nigga was talking about, because I was learning myself. Shit, Cairo, you can come over here. I got the space, bro. I got the space. We can make this happen, bro. I got, yeah, I got everything we need. I got, I got the house in. I got the shed, bro. Let's do it. Cairo ends up telling them that they're going to need two separate places to grow now. So remember, first he told them they need one place and they thought they were just going to get one spot. But now he's saying they need two spots. They need one spot for the nursery and they need another spot for, you know, where they actually grow the bud. So Tiffany's like, fuck, we're going to need a bunch more money. But I'm over here thinking because, listen, Rob went in and asked for 50K. So I'm thinking that should have been enough for the first base. Cause I, you know, I, I shit, 50K, 50, 50, 50K, 50 that's, that, that's, that, that's enough for an apartment for, for a spot for like at least two to three years, 50K. You know what I'm saying? And remember, he got double what he wanted. So I don't understand what the fuck the problem is with the money, but guess what? They got to get another spot and they need a permit. We go with the kids, they at Kevin's house and they're smoking and they're playing Pictionary. Looks like Papa's here and he brought Kenya along. And, and you know, Honestly, bro, I feel like she is over there stunting on Maisha, bro. I know Maisha over here like, damn, this nigga went and upgraded. And it turns out while they playing this game in Pictionary, Maisha throws some shade over at Kenya because she says that she wasn't a good enough teammate. 
So I don't know, Kate, they, they didn't really have a back and forth because you know, they squashed it real quick. But you can tell that Maisha a little jealous of Papa's new, you know, Papa's new little thing. Also in the middle of all this bickering, they're talking about like, you know, oh, the, the, the boys was cheating while they was playing the game. And Kevin says, I would never cheat on you, Maisha. And everybody like, what that nigga just say? So that shit was weird. They didn't really catch on to it. He, you know, he played it off, but they caught on to that shit. When he said that shit, Bakari was like, nigga. Like, bro, Bakari, he, yeah, he don't like that mixing up, but at the same time, he over there with Lene. So I, I don't know what, I don't know why he's saying anything. Best part of this scene, they tried to pass the vape to Kenya. And this nigga Papa say, hey, hey, homie, I told you my girl don't smoke, nigga. And bro, King is like, Papa, I told you, don't be calling me your girl. Nigga, oh my God, I would have been hot, bro. I would have, ah, I would have left, bro. I would have left, bro. We was just kissing over there. Now I can't call you my girl. We know where this is going. You said when I turned 18, bitch. But guess what? This nigga not 18 yet. So I guess, I don't know what she doing, but that was not cool in front of the whole crew, my nigga. You didn't have to embarrass me in front of the whole crew. We could have waited till we got outside and you could have told me that don't be calling me your girl. Don't be doing me like that in front of the homies. So I know this nigga Papa's hurt because nigga, I would have been hurt if she did that, bro. I, I don't know, we can't hang out no more, bro. I, I, I would have had to drop you after that one, bro. Nah, you're not about to do that in front of my ex when she over here thinking that you my new girl and then you tell her you're not my new girl, bro. We can't do it. So now the vibes get kind of weird and Kenya start trying to open the window cause she's saying she don't want to smell like smoke. And then Maisha and Jimmy get into another spat because Maisha's like, oh, you always working. And, and, and Jim is like, well, somebody got to work around this motherfucker. So, so they over there, you know, getting into a little, you know, little, little subliminals at each other. And, and I'm just over here thinking these kids just can't get high and chill. They all got your own crib. Y'all chilling and y'all can't even chill. But we go over to Big Stanley. He's coming into his office at the church. He walk in and guess who's here? Nope, you, you buck, right? And he's here with a bag full of donations from Duda. And he's like, hey, bro, you about to take this cash. And Stanley like, I told you that money's not welcome here, bruh. And then next thing you know, this nigga Nug pull out the strap and he started, you know, flashing it on him. And Stanley's like, bro, I'm not tripping on that pistol, bro. I told you last time, bro, God, God has my back. So then it looks like Nut just leaves and he's not able to give him the money. So we switch to the rock center and we see uh, Darnell and Emmett linking up. Emmett got all of his kids and Darnell over here teasing about, you know, Keisha dropping the kids on him. Quincy walks up and he's like, oh, we got a daycare. This nigga over here heard these niggas as he was walking and was like, we got a daycare over here. And then you can just come drop the kids off right now. So I'm like, damn, this is a cool ass daycare. You don't even got to fill out no paperwork. You just leave those niggas there. That's awesome. I wish I had that. So once they get into the next room, Darnell tells Emmett that he wants to holler at him. And he tells him that you need to be careful about the company you keep. And then he tells him that he, about the pistol. Tell him he got the pistol, got the blicky. And Darnell's like, bro, you need to be careful, bro, because this, this gun probably got bodies on it. So shout out, shout out to your boy DeMarcus, because DeMarcus was saying the gun got bodies on it. And now Darnell saying the gun got bodies on it. So I'm thinking the gun probably got some bodies on it. Darnell says he's gonna hold on to the gun and that Emmett, that Emmett's not no gangster and this, this, he's not about that life. How we how we all been saying, right? And Emmett's like, he don't need his permission, right? And Darnell's like, bro, you, you, you might not, but you definitely need my motherfucking protection, bro. So, so I like how Darnell handled that scene. And I, yeah, that's what I said he was gonna do. He was gonna holler at that nigga and tell him, yo, I'm gonna hold on to this shit. And that's what he did. So Emmett, you a bitch, bro. Cause you should have got your gun back, bro. And that's how you know you're not supposed to have it. Because if you was supposed to have that gun, you would have got that gun, bro. So now we switch into Triggs men's therapy session. And uh, th like guys, this, this is where, this, this, is the, this is the sleepiness, bro. We already know how these niggas feel. I don't need to know. I don't need them to tell me how they feel. We've been watching the show. We know this nigga doesn't feel like he's appreciated now that he got elected. But guess what? That's what fucking happens when you become a boss, nigga. It's a thankless job. No one ever wants to thank anybody for what the boss does, bro. You in city council, no one gives a fuck. This nigga Marcus comes next. And guess what? This nigga don't got no problems because his biggest problem is that his daughter can hear him smashing his girl, bro. That that that's That is not a problem that that broke niggas want to hear about that that that's that's a good problem to have my nigga you straight just get that girl out the house she'll be 18 next year make sure she go to college Emmett over here talking about his daddy issues with Darnell okay bro we, we, we was cool hearing that in season three and four but now we're in six we don't give a fuck about 
How you feel about Darnell? Y'all doing good now? Darnell over here taking care of your mama now, bro. You can't get back for that lost time. But I did feel what he said about, you know, when you don't have someone, um, you know, like a father figure in front of you, it's hard, to, it's hard to be that. But what I will say to him is there's a lot of niggas who have father figures and they still are fucking terrible, shitty ass people. So Emmett, uh, props to you, bro. I think you're doing a great job. Besides, you know, your, your dependence, your financial dependence on the Duda guy, you know. But other than that, I, th I think you're straight, Emmett. Don't, you, you got nothing to worry about. Jamal's over here talking about, he knows his sisters and disappointed in him and all these streets. These streets keep on calling back to him and shit. And I'm like, okay, okay, that's cool. But no one has shown us how the streets are calling back to you. You not up in Duda's spot. You you only been at the goddamn rec center, nigga. So, so how the hell are we supposed to know what the fuck is going on with you? So what I gotta say to the writers is, nigga, get this nigga on the show or get him off the show. Have him do some street nigga shit or don't have him do some street nigga shit. But we do not care about him rekindling his relationship with Lene. We don't. We don't, not me. And then Darnell says they all need to be mindful of the company they keep. So this nigga over here talking about Duda. And, and, and I think that, that that's a good message for everybody. Cause you know, but I, he didn't really have much else to say. So I, th I thought that was a little weak, but whatever. But yeah, be, be mindful of the company you keep y'all. For real, I see y'all. I be seeing y'all on Instagram, who y'all be rolling with. So then we switch over to Tiff and Keisha and they over here eating some chips with dip. And you know, they talking and Tiff's talking about how, you know, her butt, her new bud and how she wants to get up from under Duda and, you know, be her own boss. And Keisha's saying that she wants to do the same thing and that Emmett has been acting very weird since Duda came along. So nothing much here, but that's what they said. So we go to Jake and Gemma and it turns out they did notice that Kevin and Maish were being weird. Gemma also shows us, you know, on the fake Instagram that there's some famous rapper wearing Jake's shirt. So Jake's all excited about that and he goes and tags that dude and he's happy that his you know shirt is making his way out there, his apparel. Another thing that happens in this scene is uh, Gemma kind of catches on to uh, the, the rapper's lyrics, right? And she's so whitewashed, she's like, his lyrics are so misogynistic. But then Jake's like, that's what niggas rap about. So I'm hoping that Gemma takes this and tells Maisha that she needs to switch up her style and just, you know, start, you know, I don't like, I hate saying this shit, you know, cause I, it's, it's, it's around all the time, but she basically needs to become a pussy rapper, bro. And and I really don't want to hear Maisha rap about that. So I, I hope they just kind of, you know, play the hook and, and don't give us the verse, you know what I'm saying? So now we go to the, the wasted scene in the episode, which is pretty much Darnell and Jada throwing a dinner party. Now it's funny, it's definitely funny, but it's just a waste of a scene. So Shad and Deja, they come over and also Marcus and Tierra. And Deja immediately comes at Tierra about her lying, about her relationship with, with Victor. And you know, Tierra's like, well, you guys all know what happened with that. And Deja is like looking at the PDA Marcus and Tierra have, cause they over here just like, oh shit. They over here making out like Jennifer Lopez and uh, Ben Affleck and shit. And they're just like, what the hell? Darnell cracks a few funny jokes talking about uh, they should start a business where they show up looking like strippers, but they really fix pipes and shit. So it, it, was, it was a funny scene, but it, it just wasn't needed. I'd rather, I'd rather have, you know, cut that out so we can have some more time for something else. So we go back to Duda's spot and Bianca is here with Duda and, you know, she's all feeling on this dude and they talking about his goons and stuff. And Duda's like, yo, I got to pass this shit down to someone. And then she comments on Zay and he's like, Zay is too young. He's, you know, wet behind the ears. He's not ready for this shit. Then she comments on Nuck and he says, Nuck is loyal, but he's not ruthless enough. So I'm, shit, damn, I thought this nigga Nuck was hella intimidating. So we'll, we'll have to see where this goes. Bakari comes in, right? He comes in with Shad and they sit down with Duda and Duda gives him a drink. But then before you know it, Zay comes up and puts that bag of guns on the table and Shad looks at that shit like, oh, hell no, I'm not moving this shit. But then they say, oh, you don't got to move it, bro. You just got to hold on to it for us. So Shad's still like, nah, and he leaves. He says he don't want to get in trouble. So respect the Shad. But then Zay's like, oh, I'm going to go talk to him. But then Bakari look at Zay, cause he know what that mean. He know either this nigga gonna threaten him to do it or and kill him. So Bakari's like, let me go handle it. So he leaves and Duda looks like, nigga, you better make that happen. So I'm, I'm worried about Shah, bro. Shah took that, took those bands and now, now they want him to dance, nigga. And then I don't know if it's that, I don't know, bro. I don't know if he gonna be here for Deja, bro. I feel like that's an easy kill right there. Shah's an easy kill, bro. Easy to kill this nigga, show Deja crying. Boom, emotional, right? You haven't been on the show that long, but I still feel like that that's a good, easy kill that's not like really gonna mess anybody up. So we switched to Tiff and Rob and Cairo, and they are over in Victor's office trying to get a permit for their weed growing business. Turns out Trig and Quincy aren't really down. They got a lot going on. They just got elected. And the first thing they wanna do 
is not help Tiffany open up her weed shop. They're like, we got a bunch of other shit to do, bro. How about you come back in about six months? So they give her the political answer and she don't want to hear that shit. She gets up and she leaves. Rob hangs back and he hangs back. Uh, Quincy tries to kick him out, but he says he doesn't want to talk about the permit. He wants to talk about Q. So Quincy heads out and Rob pretty much asks uh, Trig if he knows what happens to Q and Trig straight up bold faced lies to this nigga. He keeps it quiet and short, but he straight up lies to this nigga says, nah, I don't know nothing. He had a lot of shit going on. And Rob's like, are you sure? He presses him and Trig is like, nah, I don't know what happened, bro. That's it, that's it. So uh, he definitely lied to Rob and we'll see where this goes. And I feel like if he just told Rob the truth, he just told Rob the truth. This nigga pulled up and I had to help him dump the body. That would have been better because you know Rob is gonna go take Duda out and that makes Trig's problems go away. So he switched to Tiff and she's in the car with Cairo and she tells Cairo that, you know, she's gonna grow anyway. And he's like, yo, that, there's gonna be some risk with that. And she's like, she doesn't care about the risk and that Rob is gonna be with her and support whatever she wants to do. So, hey, that's what I be saying about this girl, bro. You know, I'm, I'm sure Rob is gonna help, but you could have fucking asked that nigga before telling the next nigga what your nigga was gonna do. I don't like bitches like that. Don't tell another nigga what the fuck the plan is before we made the plan. What are you doing? So we go to Emmett's house, right? And then Nuck stopped by. Nuck knock on the door. Emmett answered the door. And he got that big leather bag of cash and he puts it in Emmett's arms. And Emmett's like, what the hell? Hell no, nah, I can't have all this bread over here. And he's like, bro, we've done a lot for you. We need your help. So then Emmett takes it, but he's like, what am I going to do if my girl finds it? He's like, don't let your girl find it. I don't know. I feel like if this big ass nigga Nuck came to my door, I feel like that would be an offer I can't refuse. You see this big ass nigga, bro? This is this is why Emmett need that gun, bro. To deal with big niggas like this nigga, bro. So now we switch to church, bro. And Stanley is up here preaching, big Stanley up here preaching, and he is throwing subs. He is throwing subs at dude to talking about, yeah, you know, when that monster, when that lion come up, when you let that lion into your house, you gotta get him out. We gotta get him out this city. And he looking right at him and dude the quiet and stuff. But look, I'm telling you, this is not going to end well. Dude is staring at this dude, giving him the hard stare. And he starts, he he leaves the sermon. But before he leaves, he tells Nuck to take care of him. And Nuck is like, say less. So, bro. So I'm like, okay, we about to catch a body. But then the episode ends. And I'm like, God damn it. We wasted the body on a dinner party. We wasted the body on on, on these like trans, trans sitting here talking at a club, then at the house selling clothes, we wasted the body on these kids playing Pictionary. We wasted the body on a goddamn group therapy session. We wasted the body. Goddamn. How did we waste the body like this? How did we fumble the bag? We should have got that, it would have been like three minutes. It would have been Stanley leaving the church, going home, and then next to you know, nut come up. Bow, 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 bow. And then that's it, end of the episode, bro. That would have been a good episode. But no, y'all niggas fucked up. Y'all don't know how to do it. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. I'm not trying to say y'all gotta be power, but y'all gotta make this shit interesting, bro. You guys can even show us Bakari talking to Shad and telling Shad that you gotta do this or they gonna kill you. Something, give me something. Give me something, bro. I can't be over here falling asleep while I'm watching this shit. Then I gotta rewatch it again just to tell y'all what the fuck happened. I don't got time for that shit. Show me some good shit. I need September 1st here now.